Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video marks the beginning of a new series on an economic policy. Today, we're going to talk about fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is when the government uses the federal budget to influence economic outcomes. When studying the impacts of fiscal policy, the HSC curriculum requires us to look at three aspects. These include economic activity, distribution of income, and allocation of resources. Today, we'll focus on how fiscal policy impacts economic activity. In my videos about economic growth, I established that the level of economic activity is driven mostly by changes in aggregate demand. You also learn in year 11 about the circular flow of income model, which explains level of economic growth through injections and leakages. The role of the federal budget in influencing short-term economic activity can be seen in these Keynesian models, as represented by taxes and government expenditure. If the government were to increase economic activity, they would reduce taxes and or increase government expenditure. This is called an expansionary stance. Increased government expenditure contributes to increased aggregate demand. Lower taxes also mean that households have greater disposable income, again increasing aggregate demand. In the circular flow model, this is simply explained as increased injections and less leakages, leading to greater economic growth. The government could achieve this by using discretionary or non-discretionary changes to the budget. Discretionary changes to the budget involve changes to the structure of the budget. You can think of this as initiatives that are deliberate, such as the government increasing funding for infrastructure or lowering the marginal tax rate. Non-discretionary changes, on the other hand, are when the levels of government expenditure and taxes changes with cyclical movements in economic activity, even without the government making any deliberate changes. These non-discretionary changes happen through automatic stabilizers. For example, during a recession, people will experience falling incomes and therefore pay less income tax. There will also be higher levels of unemployment, so government expenditure will increase through unemployment benefits. So you can see how tax and government expenditure levels would automatically adjust to have a counter-cyclical effect on economic activity. As government revenue falls and expenditure increases, an expansionary stance results in the budget outcome moving towards a larger deficit. This could be seen in this graph, where the budget outcome went from a surplus to a deficit or from an existing deficit to a larger deficit in response to falling economic growth as a result of expansionary stances. Converse to the above, the federal government can also increase taxes and reduce government spending for a contractionary stance. They may choose to do this to slow down an inflationary boom or achieve the objective of fiscal consolidation, which is to bring the budget outcome from deficit to surplus. When a government uses a contractionary stance, they reduce government expenditure to lower aggregate demand. They could also increase taxes as this would leave households with less disposable income, which further reduces aggregate demand. Again, this could happen through discretionary or non-discretionary changes. A government may increase tax rates or introduce new taxes when economic activity is very high. And because these changes are in the structure of fiscal policy, we call these discretionary changes in fiscal policy. What about non-discretionary changes during high economic growth? With incomes rising, receipts from income tax would increase. Also, more people will be categorized in higher income brackets, which further increases income tax receipts. On the expenditure side, lower unemployment rates mean that less people will be on unemployment benefits. So overall, automatic stabilizers will cause government expenditure to fall and tax receipts to increase, having a counter-cyclical effect. Again, you can observe this by looking at the budget outcome over recent years. The budget outcome usually gets smaller or even goes into surplus during economic booms. For example, after the GFC in the late 2000s, Australia's mining boom saw increased economic growth and lower unemployment rates. Increased incomes and less people on unemployment benefits meant that automatic stabilizers contributed to the smaller deficit. Additionally, the Gillard government introduced discretionary changes, such as the mining tax and the carbon tax, which helped to raise more government revenue. This contractionary stance not only reduced the budget deficit, but also helped to keep inflation under 3%. So that's an example of a contractionary stance aimed at fiscal consolidation, as well as managing an inflationary boom. So to recap, an expansionary stance is often used to increase economic activity and reduce unemployment. Examples of this include the federal budget's response to the GFC and the coronavirus. The federal government can also increase long-term economic activity by allocating resources to increase productivity and efficiency. This is one of the outcomes that we will explore in future videos. We will also be looking at how fiscal policy can influence income distribution. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC Economics easy for you. See you next time.